Hey friends, it's Tracy. Welcome to today's video. It is a special one because I have a box here in front of me and that means I am participating in the DIY mystery box challenge for this month. Guys, I haven't even cut the tape yet and opened it up. Uh, if you're not familiar with the DIY mystery box challenge, that is hosted by my good friend Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap and she has been doing this successfully for going on five years. Congratulations to Courtney because she, uh, you know, feedback people love it. And so that's why we're continuing to do this. She is the hostess. She has some, I'm going to, I call them the OGs, the, you know, like she, the core people. And then she has some guest people that she asked. And so I'm so honored and blessed that she asked me for this month. Guys, my box came from Courtney, uh, who is creative on the cheap. And so I am going to be opening this. We have the theme this month, each month we have a theme. And then we also have uh, a twist that goes with it. This theme was colors. So each of our items, we were supposed to send seven items. Uh, each is supposed to be a different color. Uh, my box went over to Jamie, who is the crafty DIY guy. Guys, he is a breath of fresh air. I just love watching his videos, his channel. He just comes up with, I'm like, oh my goodness, I never would have thought that. So Jamie, I hope you don't hate me too much for the things that I sent you because I thought it was going to be a little bit easier than what it was. I was like, oh, this is a little bit harder than what I thought. So anyway, guys, don't worry. There will be a, a link in the description box as well as at the end of the video in the end card that will tell you, uh, take you to the playlist. Courtney will have it all um, you know, just uh, spread out for you so that it will go into a loop so you don't miss anyone because guys, this is going to be super duper fun. A new feature this round is a voting link. And so that uh, will be in the description box below so that you can go and you can vote for your favorite project. <laughs> Courtney took a poll and asked for feedback from her viewers. And so uh, this is something new that that they're that she's going to be incorporating so we're going to see how it goes so uh in the description box just click the see more or uh, the little arrow or the little triangle that kind of thing and so all of the information will be in that description box so let's and uh let's go ahead and, get, and and cut open this tape and let's see what is in there now for this month there is a twist and uh we have to create a craft that is from a different decade. Guys, my decade assigned to me was the 1930s. <laughs> I'm so glad that Courtney sent some uh, resources that we could kind of look at because I'm like, you know, I wasn't alive then. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, what, what am I gonna do? Anyway, guys, so I'm gonna uh, get into this. So for this month, uh, for the mystery box, there were the two challenge items were one was something, uh, trash that you would throw in the trash and we need to do a DIY with it. So I can't wait to see what Courtney sent me. And then also another one was, uh, we just need the other challenge item is something that we need to incorporate into a DIY. And so, uh, the challenge for me is the twist probably from the era of the 1930s so anyway we're going to open this up and see what's in here all right <clears throat> okay all right so challenge one challenge two well we'll keep those to the end all right so oh let's see she's always so sweet she sent this it's wrapped so nicely uh, send this to me. How sweet. Let's see. It says Tracy. That's me. Look at how cute this is. Little high heel, high heel shoes. It says Tracy. I am so excited to have you in the mystery box again. I know you will do a great job with your box and I'm sure everything will turn out charming. That's in quotations. I love the pun. 
and Chicharro by Tracy. Uh, please don't be scared of my challenge items. Oh goodness, maybe I'm a little scared. I know you can handle them. And then she did add uh, that she, my family is in her prayers, and I do appreciate that. Uh, much love, Courtney. And so, uh, for those of you that do not know, uh, three months ago I lost my dad unexpectedly, and so uh, it was very unexpected, and it's been a really trying time. And so I do appreciate Courtney for saying that guys, it means a lot, just the little things. Okay. So let's see what is in. And then she sent me some love these caramels and that kind of thing. How sweet is that? Okay. Okay. We're going to, okay. All right. So since this theme is colors, she sent me a red cutting board. You can do something with that. Okay. We got some orange carrots some green ribbon. Look at this. Okay. All right. Look at this. A purple dish and a gold tile. Oh, and then a wood round from the uh, Dollar Tree Plus and then a black little thing like this. Okay. Oh, this. Okay. She sent some good items. I hope Jamie feels the same way. <laughs> oh, these mystery boxes are so fun. Okay. So what am I going to do? Here's challenge item number one. Oh, I love it. Oh, it, her wrapping paper, ha, or she probably printed it off, but that doesn't mean any. It says creative on the cheap. How fun is that? How creative. <laughs> creative on the cheap challenge item. Oh, okay. 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 I can do something with this. Look at this. This is a challenge item I must use in a DIY. Some, uh, some garden gloves. She's good at this. Okay, so this is challenge item number two, which is the trash. This is the trash. Well, at least it's small. <laughs> like Christmas. Okay, Trace, come on. Okay, trash. Okay, what is this? Okay, let's see what this. Oh, okay. Look at that. All right. So, guys, I've opened my box. And so then now I have to do some DIYs. I have to use the trash items as well as the challenge items and uh, make as many DIYs as I can. So I will meet you back here after uh, I've thought about some things and get my thinking cap on. Stay tuned. For this first DIY, I'm using that purple trifle bowl that was in my mystery box. Now, this was perfect because guys, my sweet mother loves purple and this color of purple is her favorite color. And since I lost my dad, uh, almost four months ago, actually when at the time of this video on the, on February 23rd, when I'm filming this video, they would have been married 61 years. And so she is, um, being so strong and yet, uh, just, you know, grieving as well. Well, red birds have become something that she clings to. It brings her comfort and peace and that kind of thing. And also lighted things she loves. And so guys, when I saw this purple uh, trifle bowl in my mystery box, and it's the perfect color for my sweet mother, uh, I knew what I was going to do with it. So this is what I'm doing. I'm making this as a memorial gift for my mother. Her birthday is actually on Sunday, which is February 25th. And I am going to give this to her and so that she can have it in her kitchen to look at and just bring her peace. So what I did guys is I, uh, just took some scotch tape and taped the, uh, lights on the inside of the bowl. Then I just filled it with some tool just to kind of mask the uh, scotch tape and that kind of thing. And so then I found the red birds over at Hobby Lobby and I'm using a nest that I had on hand. It was from uh, Hobby Lobby and uh, I'm going to be making a little bird's nest with that. First, I want to make a stand kind of 
to put some florals around just to make it really nice and pretty. And so I have this clay pot, uh, the saucer of it, and I'm going to turn it over. Well, I had already had it uh, painted purple and, you know, I probably didn't use it for whatever project I had at the time. So I just gave it an extra coat of lavender paint just to brighten that up. And so while that's drying, then I'm going to start working on my trifle bowl. So I have some Spanish moss, just uh, kind of put that around. Then I have some angel vine uh grapevine it is like thin uh thin twigs and that kind of thing you can find it on amazon i bought mine a long time ago over at hobby lobby but it's like i saw it one time that was many years ago i haven't seen it since then but i think i found it over on amazon like twigs and messy stuff really kind of gives you anxiety yes this stuff is a very very messy because it's thin but i love the wispiness of it and so that's what I'm using in this project. So I'm just going to glue everything with my Fabri-Tac glue as well as uh, just put hot glue in that in there as well. So that Fabri-Tac glue is a really good glue to use for bonding. So I'm just going to add just some greenery from the Dollar Tree and just really kind of make this really special for my mom. I used both cardinals that were on this pack from Hobby Lobby and uh, to get them to stick into the nest and on the side, I took off the little twisty little tie that was on the bottom and then I took a toothpick, cut it in half, stuck it in there because the birds are styrofoam and so I just uh, zapped it with a dot of hot glue just to secure it a bit more, then just stuck it in the nest and there on the side and guys, this this is just perfect because my parents were two lovebirds. And so this is a very special project. Thank you, Courtney, for picking this purple bowl out for me because it is very, very special. I made the cutest little bunny using that wood round from my mystery box. Now this is an 11 inch wood round. Uh, it's in the Dollar Tree Plus section. And so what I did is I just removed the uh, sawtooth hangers on the back and then I'm going to be using that wire bunny frame. I'm going to be using the ears from that and that's also from the Dollar Tree. Now what I did guys is I gave my wood round two coats back and front up uh, uh, of plaster chalk paint and then uh, for some reason I did not have it on film but I just cut off the ears from that bunny frame just with my wire cutters right at the bar and so I was kind of like oh I didn't I guess didn't have my camera going sorry about that so what I'm doing here is I'm going to wrap the ears and I'm just using some of that white rope from the Dollar Tree wrapping that around the ears and then I'm going to start on my cute little bunny face so I love whimsical, cute little faces. And if you've been here any length of time, you may know that I have uh, many, many videos that I do sweet little faces. And because this is a collaboration, uh, I did not want this video to be entirely too long. So I'll have a separate video of start to finish of how I painted this bunny face. Uh, it's just in respect. Since this is a DIY collaboration, I just want wanted to hit the high points and just share what I did for each individual project. So I gave my bunny some cute eyes, some cute cheeks, made him a nose, a sweet mouth, and just did all of my whimsical touches with my doodles and my black uh, black paint splatters. I gave him some freckles and just made him really cute. I will have again a separate video for those of my friends that do love to watch the painting videos that is a more thorough in-depth of how I painted this sweet little bunny. 
To secure the ears to the back of the bunny, I just used my staple gun and some staples that I knew would not go through the front. And then I just hammered in those staples so that they would be secure. To kind of cover it up, I had this Easter uh, style of felt. I've had it in my stash for a while. And so I said, oh, that'll be perfect. So I just cut it down to size and I just glued it on there, just securing it so that it would cover up the back of those ears as well as when it's hanging somewhere like on a door it will not clank against the door that is one of my pet peeves I hate when door hangers or something hanging and like the wind blows it or something like that and it like pops against the door that is just really one of my pet peeves anyway so what I did is made a uh, little floral garland at the top just cut some flowers and some greenery just wired all of those together and then I used that green ribbon uh, the burlap ribbon that was in my mystery box I just made a bow out of that and put it there on the top and just stapled everything secured it to the top so that it's this cute little whimsical bunny and I just love him so much and I hope that you do too. For the next few projects, I'm going to be using my challenge items as well as uh, crafting for my decade that was assigned to me. I was assigned the 1930s and the 1930s were really hard for Americans because it was the Great Depression. In 1929, the stock market crashed and the banking system collapsed. And that party from the 1920s had ended. And so at the height of the Great Depression, nearly 25% of the total workforce was unemployed. Factories were shut down and farms and homes were lost to foreclosure. The wages and the productivity plunged to a third of their 1929 peak. So a lot of people had to really struggle uh, during this depression i guess that's why it's called the great depression and so a lot of people were uh growing their own gardens they were struggling trying to put food on the table and so they were really trying to figure out what can they do to feed their families and uh so i'm just kind of highlighting here i'm taking my challenge item the gloves uh from my mystery box and i had a toolkit that i picked up from hobby lobby last season when they were clearancing out some of their spring items and so i was like i'm gonna do a diy with that. And so that's why I'm so um, excited to incorporate this into this DIY. So I am just putting these together. I'm just using some uh, safety pin pins to just get these little gloves to hang together. I want to make just a little decor item just to highlight, um, just to out of respect for the farmers and everyone that grows a garden and just works with their hands and grows their own food. And so I'm taking some of those little styrofoam carrots. I'm going to be hanging some of those off of the gloves as well and so uh, this was really really fun to put together and uh, I'm just going to tie it all off with just some raffia uh, I'm going to use one of those tags that was on uh, the challenge item actually and just hand letter how does your garden grow I love the little uh, you know play on words and all of that kind of thing and so I'm just using everything in my mystery box it is just absolutely absolutely amazing. And I'm just so grateful uh, to Courtney for sending me some awesome uh, items to rock these DIYs with. So 
So this next one is just taking a recycled jar. Uh, this had uh, just, I think, jelly in it. And so during the Great Depression, they did not have like really fancy smancy stuff. So I'm sure a lot of the, uh, you know, homemakers and uh, ladies would have to just use any kind of jar to can their uh, items with their when they would grow in their garden. And so they did a lot of canning and a lot of, uh, you know, growing in their garden and so that they could have food for the, to feed their family. And so uh, what I did is I just put a few of the styrofoam carrots in this jar. Uh, I did have to add a pack that I had uh, on hand and that worked out good. And so then I I took another tag and then just wrote carrots 1934 because usually they would uh, put the year. I know that my grandmother, uh, I remember that as a child, anytime she would can anything, she would always use a piece of masking tape and put the year on there. <laughs> and so that's what I'm doing. Just put that uh, on there. I was going to tie a uh, uh, like a raffia bow, but then I was like, hmm, that didn't look too good. So I just pulled out some muslin fabric and ripped off a piece of that. And I like that much better. And so I just really love the way that this little uh, carrots in a jar, canning jar turned out. This next project is using uh, more of my items from my mystery box, the cutting board, as well as the gold tile. And so I was really getting into these 1930 kind of things era, uh, just kind of thinking about how the people felt, what kind of things they did, what kind of things were available. And so what I'm doing here is uh, I know that it was the Great Depression. And so there were a lot of struggles, a lot of, uh, you know, factories had shut down, jobs were scarce. And so people were really having to fight to do things to feed their families. But there's always those rich people that are well to do that still have the opportunity to have a fancy smancy dinner, go out, you know, probably in the big cities and that kind of thing. So what I'm doing here is I am going to make a menu board. Uh, and I'm kind of was envisioning like if you were to like be in New York City, Los Angeles, somewhere like that, Chicago, like if you are, are like a hotel, somewhere where they were of the rich and famous, you know, kind of thing, what a menu board would kind of look like. And so I am also using the uh, trash items that were in my mystery box. It was these cardboard uh, things. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually kind of like making like a stand or an easel for my uh, menu. And so what I did is I just went on a website and that was called foodtimeline.org. And then I went to the food decades. And so I, it has a whole list of all the things that uh, they kind of had during the 1930s. And actually, it had a lot of American uh, items that debuted during the 1930s. I was really surprised when I read a whole bunch of those uh, things. Anyway, so what I did is I just went to Canva then and just made me kind of like a menu. What's for Friday dinner? Bake salmon with uh, parsley sauce stuffed baked potatoes, spinach, orange and watercress salad, pineapple topped pudding, coffee and milk. And this was, was from the 1937. And it was taken from a week of family menus, the America's cookbook. So I just wanted to reference where I kind of got my information from. But what I'm doing here for my menu is I want it to kind of fancy it up a little bit. And so I just pulled out some of this gold ribbon and I was trying to make it look a little bit more fancy. But then I decided to use the black uh, little wood piece that was in my mystery box. And so I kind of wasted this ribbon uh, because I covered it all up anyway. But I just want to kind of 
you know, follow through and show you exactly what I did to complete this because I was envisioning a, if you're go, in going to a fancy restaurant into like a hotel, uh, something like that. If you are going to have a night out, uh, that you would be presented with this fancy smancy little menu board to show you what the Friday dinner was. And so, um, what I'm doing here is I decided to add, you know, fancy smancy menu boards kind of have like a crest at the top or something, a fancy decal. And so that's kind of where my mind was. Uh, and so I was going to use this. And so at first I was just going to glue it and have the gold ribbon show through the back, but then I changed my mind and just cut out a piece of black cardstock and just covered up the back as well. Then I have some gold glittery styrofoam balls. I just use my serrated knife just to cut those in half. And then I'm just kind of fancying, fancying it up a bit. And I'm going to add a bit of ribbon on there as well so that, you know, because it was fancy. And during this great depression, if people were able to go out or, you know, the rich and famous, all that kind of thing, you know, some people did, and <laughs> they did do that. So that's kind of like where my, I, uh, where my thoughts were when I was envisioning this. And so to add my menu board to my actual, uh, cutting board here, I just use some pop dots because again, it was, it's a fancy menu board. So I'm just trying to make it as fancy as possible. And so then, uh, for my trash, uh, that I was challenged with to figure out how I could use that. I, again, I'm using that as an easel. Uh, and so I covered it with a bit of those, that gold and white tile. And so then just to make sure that it does, uh, stick, all the glue and everything. I just use my clamps to hold it all together. And then now I'm just taking the rest of that gold ribbon and just making the ribbon look nice on the ends by just adding a V cut. And then I'm going to glue that on the top. And I just love this. I just really got into these 1930s. I just cannot believe everything that people went through in the great depression and how people had to struggle and, uh, but just reading on those websites. Thank you, Courtney, for sending some resources that we could look at to refresh my memory of different things. I'm sure we learned about all of this stuff when we were in school. And it was nice to revisit some history. Guys, I had so much fun doing these DIYs. Thank you to Courtney for inviting me. And also, don't forget that there is a voting button uh, or link in the description box where it'll take you to a form. Vote. Let us know. Give Courtney some feedback. Tell us what you think about the DIYs that we're doing. And also, there is a playlist at the end of the video. I have it uh, so easy for you. All you have to do is click on that. It'll take you to the playlist and you can watch all of the DIYs. All right, guys, thank you so much. God bless you and y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.